we took a look at what are organizations that are raising more doing. And we came up with kind of our, our top three. This list is a lot longer, but these were kind of the three that continued to surface for us. So number one, the event is now going to be a bit more accessible financially. So you've got a bigger reach. So we're seeing organizations try lots of things from trying a lower ticket price to give more opportunities to give and donate throughout the event or having a higher ticket price, but more value based. So you get a meal, you get all these different elements with it. So think about that for your organization. We now have the ability to expand our donor base. What does that look like and how do you engage them? Number two, no location barriers for your, for your virtual event. This one, it's really important to think about how you can capitalize on this. So we can now have donors and participants engaged that aren't in your city or in your town. And so how and what are you going to do to make sure that out of town guests feel welcome? What are you going to do so out of town guests know about your event and may tune in or may want to watch and participate? And then number three, reduce costs compared to in-person events. The reduced costs do mean more space to raise more, but I also want you to think about what does that look like and how can you actually invest those funds differently so that you can give your donors a better experience because a better experience will in turn lead to more money raised at the end of the day. These are some ideas that really help other organizations hit their goals. The first is uh, create an event campaign. So introduce and use different elements to engage your different donor types leading up to the event. Raffles, silent auctions, a live auction and a fund a need on the day of maybe give your donors different and more avenues to participate in your cause. It just creates more energy and it just improves your donor experience. Maybe I can't afford to bid on a live auction item, but you've got a raffle or a 50 50. And so I can put in a hundred bucks there instead. Maybe somebody else is more excited in the live auction rather than the chance to win in the 50 50, but we can both be engaged and we can both be really excited about what you guys have planned when we have a broader broader options of how we can give. The second one is start marketing and your outreach early. Don't leave this to the last minute and get really creative around how you get the word out. Younger donors are all over social media, but like, don't forget about your newsletters, your website, promoting your event at other events you're leading up to it. Whatever you can do to get the word out and continue to remind people that your event's coming up, the better chance that they have in actually attending. And number three, invest in the experience. So I've mentioned this a couple times, but it's honestly so key. Give your donors something to talk about with their colleagues on Monday morning. And I think if you guys had that as your goal, as you're planning your event and as you're planning the entertainment, it would probably be a really great place to start. Um, a virtual bartender that can keep uh, your attendees topped up throughout the event. Maybe you try a virtual cooking class or a virtual wine tasting or dance class. Oftentimes, you're going to have your prospective donors attending the event before they make an investment in your cause. So seamlessly mixing those heartwarming moments and stories and awareness about your cause with some really engaging and entertaining elements throughout the night is going to do you guys such a great service and helping to build more excitement around what you're doing.